Hello, Internet, and welcome to Sony Centric, the Outer Haven's official PlayStation podcast. My name is Jason Kwasnicki. I'm your host, and I'm joined here today by the navigator, Clinton Bowman. You know, I'm here recording Sony Centric. I could be at Queens College right now watching Wildin' Out with Nick Cannon. I'm just saying. But I'm here. Nick Cannon? Wait, yeah, for real? Wildin' Out right now is being taped at Queens College. What the fuck are you doing on my shitty ass podcast? Because I care <laughs> about your shitty ass podcast. Okay, thank you, Clinton. I appreciate it. We also have the lovely Mark Sullivan. I personally completely forgot Nick Cannon was a person, so... It's Sorry, incredible, Clinton, that baby. sucks, man. <laughs> Mark, Mark, our bromance can no, can no longer continue. You, you just ended me? the bromance. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, I never folks... Saw, never saw Drumline. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, not too much in the way of news this week, uh, though some interesting comments from the director of the upcoming Final Fantasy XV game, Hajime Tabata. He wants to make us cry with the latest installment in the storied franchise. Clint both doesn't cry. Yo, he I'm probably gonna. Yo, I'm just gonna cry when that game comes out. <laughs> exactly. That's what I tweeted. That's what I tweeted when I saw this. I'm like. Oh, I'm gonna cry. Let's just hope it's for the right reasons. It's gonna fucking release, and I'm gonna be like, finally! Nah, it's gonna be like Final Fantasy X, where everything is realized to be a dream. <laughs> God. <laughs> is, isn't that 8 where it's like the fan theory? Uh, supposedly it's like a death sequence the entire thing? Yeah, but, uh, Squall dies at the end of the first disc. And well, the, yeah, the entire thing is a dream as he's dying. Old. Yeah, what? let's not go into that. Yeah. <laughs> Clint's like, fuck this. <laughs> I should have gone to see Nick Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> well, this inspired us because, you know, the three of us here, we love RPGs. You know, maybe some of us more JRPGs, some of us more Western RPGs, but they're all RPGs. They're all equal, equal rights for equal RPGs. So we're each going to talk about a little bit our definitive RPG. The oh, wait, one so by RPG you meant role playing game. I thought you meant the uh the rocket propelled grenade like you know shooters and stuff. I'm I'm kidding. I'm, that was a terrible joke. Yes, yes I'm was. I'm just picturing Mark. I'm just picturing Mark. I'm picturing you walking, and you just tripped and fell. Your nose is bleeding. There's blood everywhere. <laughs> so we're each gonna talk a little bit about uh, our definitive RPG. Definitive. Uh, the parameters for that, just what is definitive to our experience, our gaming history, personally. So we'll talk a little bit about those games, why they were so definitive, and then uh, maybe spend a few minutes talking about how we view them now in retrospect, do kind of a little post-mortem on them. Uh, Clinton, the senior editor here, we'll start with you. Uh, one of my favorite games, even though this was in an originally released on a PlayStation console, for those of you that didn't know... Um, there was a console exclusively in Japan known as the Wonder Swan and the Wonder Swan Color. And this game originally released on the Wonder Swan Color. I want to say this is a while ago. Keep this in mind. So I'm trying to remember the exact date. This was in 20. This is 2012. 2002, excuse me. So this game came out originally in the Wonder Swan Color in 2002 and finally came over to America in 2005 when the Game Boy Advance and was ported over again to the PlayStation Portable in 2007, and I got my first wind of the game when I was in college. Uh, it was called, it's called Riviera the Promised Land. Um, it's an RPG with dating sim elements, and uh, you're pretty much playing through the I. It's based in Norse mythology. Um, okay. For me, it was such a great game because the characters were very relatable for me, and it kind of twisted the RPG standard on its head. Where... Yeah, it was turn yeah, it was turn based, but in a weird kind of way in battle, you know, you can either you can retreat, you can choose you you get you you're walking around with five people. But you only get to choose three out of five. And a specific uh position scheme, whether it's the attack formation with two in the front and one in the back, or a magic formation with one in the front and two in the back. And there's just there's trigger points to trigger moves. There's you know, there's so many different kind different kind of thing. And it's like the the item endurance is taken from Fire Emblem. 
So, like, you know, you can use the item certain amount of time for breaks entirely. So, you're literally doing item management. It's like item and meter management in the game. It's just so much fun. This sounds very complex. Is it? Is it, is it complex? Yeah, like, it, I, I'm also hearing, like, shades of Persona here, kind of the uh, yeah, it, relationships. It, it, yeah, it's kind of complex. The relationships grow, and you can get possible different endings based on who really likes you the most. Which one of the four girls really likes you the most. So, it's like, things you can do can basically make them happy or piss them off. Or make them feel a certain kind of way about you. You know, it, it, it's pretty hilarious, though. It, it, it gets pretty comedic but then it gets really dark after a while you know okay so we got a little bit of humor a little bit of drama lots of that I, this is a japanese game right you said it yeah. was in japan yeah it originally released for the wonder swan color in july of 20, 202, 2002 so okay so anime girls i'm assuming they're anime girls yeah yeah anime girls one's a one's a witch One's a witch, one's a, one's a, I trying to remember, an arc who's like, you know, kind of like a succubus in a way, but not a succubus. Ooh. You know. I can't, I can't wait to find the, uh, the JPEGs and PNGs to stick in this video for that game. Uh, there's also, you know, a chick that, um, fights with a rapier and another one that fights with a, with a bow and arrow. So, Yeah. Okay, so we got one. Mark, you're up. You're up at yes. bat. Yes. My uh, my pick is uh, the first RPG I ever played. Uh, it's a lot of a lot of people's first RPGs they ever played. It's, it's Final Fantasy VII. Oh, didn't see this one coming. Yeah, I didn't see this one coming, yeah. It's fuck that game. Um, only in my bio, but... <laughs> yo, fuck that game. Oh, fuck Clinton. That game. God, it's a good game. The um, hair is too spiky. The hair is very spiky, but the, this game, uh, I replayed it recently, recently, and it still it still resonates a lot with me. Um, I think the materia system is fan a fantastic way uh, of giving your giving your player or giving the player abilities to attach to characters. Um, actually, replaying through it, uh, I found a couple of flaws, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But it's the first game that I really played that. Uh, made me feel emotions about the story. I mean, like when I was when I was that age, the most gaming I was doing was playing pl platformers like Spyro, and you don't really get much emotion out of that. But this game uh, really, really touched me with the things that happened. Obviously, you know, spoilers for a game that's almost twenty years old. But when Aerith dies, it's super, super like sad to you know someone that hasn't really experienced a game like that before you know where there's kind of a, you begin to care about those characters and then suddenly they're gone um i think it was a really tight rpg and yeah it, it just it means a lot to me still to this day and you know that's that's not really saying much because it means a lot to a lot of people but yeah but i mean me personally like you know it wasn't necessarily my first rpg that i played personally like i tell you my first rpg i played was pokemon like I'll be honest. And yeah. Pokemon is an RPG. Like people yeah, yeah, say no, it's it not is. an RPG, you're but it is an absolutely RPG. right. You're absolutely right. It absolutely and, is. And it was one of the first RPGs that I played, and then I played Final Fantasy VII afterwards, and I didn't see what was so special because um, before even playing Final Fantasy VII, honestly, I played Final Fantasy VI. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. Like it, it's the whole nostalgia yeah. effect. This is my first RPG. I hold it in a much high, uh, a much brighter light than a lot well, of other people it. do. It's not even it. I don't even high, hold. Po I'll be honest with you. I love Pokemon Yellow, but I can't even hold it in a higher regard because I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> let's be honest. Let's be honest. There's so many better RPGs. Like I'm gonna be honest. Like one of my favorite are like I just said, Riviera: The Promised Land is like literally my most favorite RPG that I've ever played. Like one RPG that I actually took the time and got serious and finished. I finished other RPGs, but I just finished them casually. Like, I took the time to try to get some, at least two or three different endings and play through the game. You know, I look at I look at Tales of Vesperia, which is another one of my favorite ones. I hold that in higher regard than Final Fantasy VII, and I definitely hold that in higher regard than Pokemon. You know, Final Fantasy VI is another good one. Final Fantasy X, you know, as much mm. as the ending kind of pissed me off, like, I still think that was a better game, in, in, per, in my personal opinion. You know, 
it, that's just my personal opinion. No, uh, that's I, fine. I haven't played. I haven't played any other Final Fantasy. So I didn't like. I didn't like. I didn't like twelve. Yeah, Ooh, I didn't like twelve. See, I, we gotta I have answered, a talk about that. And yeah, I, I answered in like thirteen. <laughs> I danced her in like 13 or 13. Yeah, two. and we also have to have a talk about that, but... You know, like, I'll be honest with you, like, Lightning is such one of the worst protagonists I've ever had to deal with. Like, legitimately. Such a bland protagonist, but that's just my personal opinion, how I feel. I respect everybody's opinion. It must, like, you know, you know, you know, I can, people can get mad at me for saying I don't like, I don't like Ruby because I think the writing's bad, but that's just my personal opinion, again. You know, like, Final Fantasy VII, don't get me wrong, hold that in a vacuum, it's a very good game. It's a very good and very revolutionary game. It changed the RPG game, yeah. at least in the United States. Just keep this in mind. Like, literally take the nostalgic glasses off. There's better RPGs out there. No, of no, I, and I understand that. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, just, I'm saying Final Fantasy VII is the RPG that means the most to me. Mm -hmm. well, that if it game, means the most to you, I respect yeah. that 100%. Like, yo, I, I, can, I can see that, and I'm happy for that. Yeah. I'm just saying, when people sit down there and openly say Final Fantasy VII is the best game ever, the best RPG ever, I'm going to slap the nostalgia glasses off your face and point you to, like, maybe one or two Tales games. Skies of Arcadia. Uh, like, what is I don't know about that, man. Skies of, Ar Skies of Arcadia. You know, I I'm, just, I'm just saying games that are out there, you know, even so much so Chrono Trigger. I was about right? to say, when are you yeah. going to say Chrono Trigger, man? Like, Chrono, <laughs> Chrono Trigger. Like, if you if you tell me Final Fantasy VII is better than Chrono Trigger, I'm like literally gonna stop being friends with you. Like Final you Fantasy VII is better than Chrono Trigger. No, I'm we're kidding. done. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that was uh, a test. <laughs> yeah, like you know, like Chrono Trigger might be one of the best RPGs in terms of system, story, and art direction I've ever messed with. Like in terms of just pure objective sense. Fun fact: How long? How long do you think it takes the average person to beat Chrono Trigger? How long? <laughs> Man, I can't. Even no, 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 no. This is a serious question. Like average, average play time. What do you think? Like, is the on an hours it's basis? A, it was hours basis, dude. I can't even count. Let me that, say, uh, I put in a lot of time on the DS port. I I could probably uh, my my save is probably still on there. I, I've lent it out to somebody, but my save is probably still there. No, and I, it's I'm probably saying... about forty hours. I've never beaten the game. Guess what? Chrono Trigger is a 15 hour game. That yeah, is, but the average that is game, if you time. rush it. Yeah. <laughs> but well, no, no, no. It's not even, not even if you rush it. It's a 15 hour game. Like, if you're just playing like at an average pace, mm -hmm. but it feels like a 40 hour game, it's so good. I'll be honest with you. Like, based on like gameless.com, I just checked this out. You know, the average, the legitimate average gameplay time is 25 hours, 23 minutes. With the on what, what was that? What site was that? Gamelengths.com. You know, like, average game time is like 25 minutes and 23 seconds, with the minimum time being 16.30 and maximum time being 49.19. Wait. 49.19? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, and those are hours and minutes. Regardless, so. that's still really short for a JRPG. Yeah, it's short for JRPG, but it's like you know there. But it feels. A, a well, long. I feel like you also have to remember that w that came out on the SNES. Uh, At first, yeah. Like, yeah. So, well, I'm saying that that's what it was originally developed for. That's how much. That's how much content. There were how much content they had to work with. They had to keep that in mind when they made the game. So. Like, yeah, no, uh, that, that game had a lot of content. That game had. Yeah, a no, lot I'm, of it did. It did. I'm. I'm simply saying, like, limitations of the medium. Yeah, so I had to keep in game, mind there was only so much they could put in there. Yeah, but again, like I said, that game had a lot of content for mm -hmm. the SNES, and it was such a good RPG. Like, keep in mind, I will never. I love Super Mario RPG, but I will never say Super Mario RPG is a better better game than Chrono Trigger. Like, that right. would be blasphemy. Yeah, you know, and keep in mind, Chrono. The reason why we're talking about Chrono Trigger because Chrono Trigger did come out on the PS One. Yeah, yeah, they they re released like an anthology with, the, uh, and, and, and then Chrono Final Cross, Fantasy, Final Fantasy Chronicles. It was a. Uh, Final Fantasy Four and Chrono Trigger yeah. bundled together. Yeah. yeah, so it came out. It came out on the PS One. I mean, Chrono Trigger came out by itself too. So on the PS One, I think it was like a one disc game that yeah. they just expanded a little bit. It was because but, they did the sequel Chrono Cross on. Uh, yeah, well, Chrono it wasn't Cross. like a sequel, but it was like a it, in the same whatever. Yeah. 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 So, but yeah, you said there was a little bit of an issue that you had with Final Fantasy Seven. 
Oh, after I played it, yeah. So I recently played through it. Uh, played through it again. I got. I bought the PS4 port. Um, first of all, Square adding that three times speed to their ports now is a godsend. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Because yeah. <laughs> all of those animations just look so clunky and slow, and speeding them up makes everything so much better. Yeah. Especially just walking around. I, uh, I beat that game in so much shorter of a time. I actually platinumed it in so much shorter of a time. And I accomplished things that I never accomplished when I was a kid. Uh, but as for actual problems that I found with the game now, um, I really, really like it when RPG... Jason, you suggested me to start playing through Final Fantasy IX, which I started doing. And one of the things I really, really like about that game, and I really like when RPGs do is when they make characters to be a specific class. Yeah. Right. When aping, you have aping my, theme, aping you my have... game? Huh? I said you're aping my game now. No, 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 no. I'm I'm like I'm praising it for this. I'm pra- I I love it when RPGs have a specific like this guy's going to be a knight and this guy is going to be a black mage and this person's going to be this and and well, I mean, it was, honestly most RPGs do that it's just they don't directly like say it. Well, yeah, yeah, Final Fantasy IX was very on the nose about it because, like, the story arcs were kind of tied to... Like, Vivi yeah. is referred to as a black mage throughout the game. Like, he... That's his race, his ethnicity, what what have you. Exactly. You know? But there is a there is a split in RPGs that some, some do and some don't, and Seven is one of the ones that don't, and I realize now as I replayed it that I fucking hate that. I can't stand that. Everybody, everybody basically functions the same way. Uh, the stat differences in attaching material, as great of a system as it is, doesn't really. It kind of makes a negligible difference. And everyone's stats are basically the same, except Cloud, who is just a beef monster at everything he does. Right. His stats tower above everybody, and I, I just don't like that. There's no, there's no specialization unless I make the specialization, and I'd prefer the game had me do that than me. Because if you, if you have to end up doing it, you might forget, and then it's like, oh, damn, now I gotta, yeah, it's now, like, now I gotta struggle, you know? It, well, it's also like when, if the game, f- for narrative reasons, forces you to remove a character from your party, um, that character was that specific job, and now I have to make someone else do it, That that's how they functioned, and now someone else has to function that way. I just, I, I, I like it when the game forces me to do that, rather than me having to shuffle things around and make someone into something that I don't really want them to be. But it's what I need in order to work, like you know, work with, right? Um, and and that's why Final Fantasy IX's ability <laughs> system was so well, awesome. Yeah, but continue, continue awesome. what you were saying. Um, I also think materia growth is way too slow. It it I don't know how I was able it, because of three times speed, I was able to level materia up way faster. But I don't know how I would have ever done that because I did not have patience as a child and. Or as a teenager, and that just would have taken way too long. I think I think the per- some of that progression just goes by way too slow. Right. Um. And I had I had there were some other things I I can't even remember. But, yeah, I mean I mean my game uh, that I was gonna put out there was Final Fantasy IX. Obviously, I think I hinted yeah. at it. Um, yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> beat you to just, it, man. Sorry. Just uh. I bring it up. Um. Generally speaking. I loved how it returned to the roots of JRPGs, the uh, fantasy roots, that I appreciate much more than the like sci-fi cyberpunk stuff that it started moving towards, and it kind of it now dominates the genre. But even more so than that, the story was just uh, the story had everything. It had humor, it had charm, it had wit, and I... it was dark at times, but it had a very touching, bittersweet, like legitimately touching, bittersweet ending. That I won't spoil, but uh, I think it yeah, was especially uh, since I'm playing through. It right yeah, now. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh, bad. But but it it is like I think that ending and maybe the ending to Snake Eater are the only endings in video game history that have really moved me. Um, and just you know the place and time. It was it, Final Fantasy IX was my first RPG. Before that, I had an N64, and I'd never had a Sony. I never had the PlayStation One, so I kind of spent my years as a youth reading EGM and all all those gaming magazines and seeing these ads for like Brave Fencer Musashi and Breath of Fire and you know all those Golden Age PS1 RPGs. 
just wanting to play them but never having the ability. Then I got a PS2, backwards compatibility. <laughs> the PS2's launch titles were kind of shit, so I spent most of the wow. early years you of like, the PS2. You didn't like the bouncer? Okay. <laughs> was, was the bouncer? The bouncer was a. Uh, was that even like a launch title? I, I thought that was, was a few months in. Maybe, maybe it wasn't. I think it was planned to be a, a launch I, title, though. I just remember having s the Summoner and, uh, like, FIFA 2000-whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, that was, a that was a, like, slightly after launch on the PS... On, on the PS... Uh, on the PS2 in Japan, at least. Like... That came out in December. <laughs> yeah, so, like, basically, my first few months of having a PlayStation 2 was buying playstation one games that i was i had always wished i could play and Hi. the first the first three were final fantasy seven through nine i started with nine first just because i was the newest one but yo, yeah. but yo and i ended up like... liking it better than all the other ones but can i be real can i be real you didn't like armor core 2 or dead or alive 2 hardcore like yo what about ssx <laughs> ssx was actually too? a good game it's Street Fighter EX3 in Tekken Tag Tournament. Come on, son. Like Tekken, hold on, Tekken Tag Tournament. That wasn't like a launch, launch game, but that came out shortly after launch. But like, I'm it talking was, it like was considered a launch game. It was considered a launch game. I, I suppose you could. It depends what yo, you were what, talking about with the time window. Yo, what if the, what, are you talking, what about Ready to Rumble Boxing Round Two? Ready to Rumble. So anyway, yeah, I just. Overall, I love the style of Final Fantasy IX. Um, I've always been in its corner. Nowadays, a lot of people come out from the woodworks, and it's kind of like with Majora's Mask and Zelda, how people come out of the woodworks and say they always liked it. Yeah, but and, you know, it's, and that's, that's but, underrated. Yeah. Can I, be, can I be real? Link to the Past is a better game than all that shit, so shut up. <laughs> um, I've never heard I don't of that know. game. <laughs> I don't think I don't think everyone's anyone's ever mentioned that game before. What? I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, I'm about to say I was about to fight you, son. Like... But uh, yeah, and I mean, honestly, if I was to look back and criticize it at all, it's like for all the same reasons that Mark was criticizing Seven. It's literally just limitations of the time and the format. Yeah. Personally, I don't know. my how, biggest how gripe with Nine. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. You're they're fine. Uh. My personal biggest gripe with Nine is uh, just how much missable stuff there is. I'm a oh. completionist, and if I miss something, it drives me nuts, and Nine is riddled with that. Yeah, that's one of the greatest parts about Nine, is how fully fleshed out that world is. Oh, but missing like, things just bothers me so much. In, in those first, um, well, I guess if you just ran straight through, it'd be like 10 minutes. When you pick up in Alexandria, and you're first playing as Vivi, and you gotta go to the play... Mm -hmm. and get you get your take and go to the play, you could easily spend an hour to two hours in that opening section of Alexandria yeah. just going on, like, side quests, finding chests and stuff. It, you, it's, learn, it's uh, you learn amazing. Tetra Master right off the bat. Exactly, yeah. You could spend all that time doing Tetra Master. Right. For me personally, I love that ship. Uh, Clint, how, how do you feel about your game? Though. About Riviera? I think the only thing, I think the only thing that kind of kills me, was, like, the, the writing was cheesy. That Revere, the writing was kind of cheesy, mm -hmm. but I mean, the Norse mythology kind of made up for that shit. <laughs> yeah, you can always throw in a smattering of Vikings and Thor. Or like and... a sense, the uh, like the writing was bad, but the lore was the lore was fantastic. Yeah, like, the lore was fan freaking fantastic, man. Like nobody understands that, like how good the lore can be. Like, he, he, keep in mind, like the writing can be cheesy, but because the story is great, the story is fan the story is fantastic. The writing gets cheesy in the funny moments, but like when it gets to the point where it's like, yo, we gotta stop it, we gotta stop this, because it's, it's like literally gonna destroy the world. It's like, yo, dude, like the writing is intense. Like there's times that it just gets intense. You know what I mean? Yeah, it kind of yeah. sounds like a a little game called Destiny. Where there's lore <laughs> about there's lore about world no, 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 eating no, 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 worms and shit wait, wait, and like out, what in the lore? game. You're, like, no, whoa, whoa, whoa! There's lore in Destiny. There's a there's shit no, ton of lore in Destiny. Lore, quote, unquote, okay, quote, unquote. There's lore. <laughs> like, no, man. If you sit down and read those uh the the, the cards Grimoire, you get, Grimoire yeah, cards, the yeah. cards man, they have a ton Clay of lore attached to them. Yo, Clint Bowman ain't got no time to read no damn cards. Like, <laughs> like yo, I'm sorry. Unless the Pokemon cards. 
If he sees four more cards, I'll read those. You want to know why? Because I use them to attack. Like, you know <laughs> I can actively use those. <laughs> nah, no, but honestly, I think that was a stupid thing for Destiny to do anyway. Like, yeah, I, no, I agree. Oh, you mean you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 was more, I was more trying to make a joke at your game's expense. <laughs> he tried. He tried and failed miserably. Miserably. <laughs> that, is, that is true. There are giant world-eating worms in the lore of Destiny, and they've yet to make an appearance in the game. I'm somewhat upset. Oh, Don't oh, worry. No, no, They'll no, make no. an appearance in the sequel, because that's the next in, thing. In Destiny that's 2, even, thing though Destiny, even though Destiny doesn't even need a sequel, you can just freaking update that shit with DLC and be fucked, call it a day. Yeah, right. well. as, uh, as Mel Brooks would title it, Destiny 2, The Search for More Money. Yo, exactly. <laughs> Oh like, right! They like play. They play too damn much. That's, that's exactly what it is. They play too goddamn much. <laughs> so Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy VII, and shit. What was it? Riviera. God, Ooh, the, he didn't the remember land. the name. The Promised Land. I know. Uh, I didn't remember the subtitle. The <laughs> subtitle of it. Ah, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I did remember Riviera. So go fuck yourself, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> He's not Marilyn Manson, though. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> we just went to a dark place, folks, so we're going to end it before it gets even darker. <laughs> My call to action to you. What do you think, guys? What is your definitive RPG experience on a Sony console? Please leave it below in the comments. And if you like this discussion, please upvote it. Like it. Bottom line, just like the video, okay? Just like it. And subscribe for more content from the Outer Haven Net at www.youtube.com. This has been Sony Centric, the Outer Haven's official PlayStation pro podcast. My name is Jason Kwasnicki. I've been your host. And we've been joined here today by Clinton Bowman and Mark Sullivan. Bye. And Mark, as always, misses oh. his cue to say goodbye. Yo. Yeah, bye. <laughs> you got that new mic, that new snow mic. I got mic. the new mic. I you know. sound so much better, and yet, yet, you still can't say goodbye at the oh, end of I'm the saying, podcast. I'm, say I'm saying goodbye now. And, and that's what counts. Yeah, yeah that's what counts. It's that's the right. thought. Peace out, Internet. Later. <laughs>